Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking about this Rear Link video doorbell. I just installed it, so I'm going to go through the process, through the unboxing, the installation, the integration within Home Assistant, and what the image quality looks like, and my final thoughts. So stay tuned so you don't miss it. Full disclosure, Rio Link did provide this video doorbell free of charge to me, but there are no strings attached. I don't have to say anything in particular about it. They're not reviewing it ahead or anything like that. So everything you see is my full and honest review. I wanted to take a minute and just go over some of the awesome specs and things that are included with this Rio Link video doorbell. It has that separate chime so that allows you to put it elsewhere in your house and it doesn't have to be where the old mechanical chime is, which is really cool and really convenient for us because I don't really like where our mechanical chime was. This is a 2K plus video doorbell. So the quality of the video is just awesome. It has the person detection. It's got the 2.4 giga, gigahertz as well as the five gigahertz Wi-Fi integration. So it's the dual band there. We have the quality night vision on it. There's the wide angle viewing lens. So it's a 180 degree viewing angle. So you can see everything that's happening out front. It doesn't have to be directly in front of the camera. We have the two-way audio. It has the pre-recording, so it can record before the motion starts and provide that as well. And it has preset responses. So if it detects something, uh, you know, it can give a certain response. Or if you know, they press the doorbell, it can give uh, the response that, you know, leave the package at the door. All right, let's go ahead and get some box. First, we have, it looks like the instructions. We'll disregard those for the time being. We'll get back to those when it's time. We have the video doorbell, nice uh, black, sleek looking doorbell, just has the uh, cover on here. But uh, once that's off, it'll look really nice. We have the chime. So this will replace our chime that we currently have. Um, but what's really cool about this is anywhere there's an outlet, we can put the chime now rather than having it um, right beside the door, which is right by our hallways, you know, with the uh, bedrooms in it. So it's not ideal where it's at now. So this will be a much better option for us. And then we have lots of hardware. Um, so just a couple of connectors. We have the screws. We have a power cord in case you don't have the pre-existing wiring. We have pre-existing wiring we're gonna use, so we won't need the um, plug here. We also have an extension for the plug. So again, we won't need this. We won't need the ethernet cable they include. Um, and we have a couple more extenders and uh, another plug with the uh, Y on it. And then we will use these though. So we have a wedge here because we have our our video doorbell uh, being placed at the side of our porch. So we're gonna angle it over across and cover the whole porch there and uh, use the wedge to, to help us do that and get that better view rather than getting a lot of the wall. And then we have a, a bracket here that appears for the to be for the mounting. So let's go up and we'll get this hooked up. We need to go ahead and connect the video doorbell before we do the install, I guess, to make sure that everything's working. So I did go ahead and connect the two wires on the back and I'll go ahead and plug in the chime as well as the doorbell and then we'll add it to the app. And as soon as you plug it in, it goes through this process of telling you you need to install the app. It does it in a bunch of different languages, but I'm uh, not that smart, so I only know the English language at the beginning. But I'm going to go ahead and get it installed here through the app, loading the app, and then selecting the ad, and then we'll select the um, QR code on the back of the camera, scan that. So here I'm going to add it and scan the QR code. Use the camera and the doorbell to scan the QR code that your phone creates. And it's pretty self-explanatory that when it says it's connected, you hit the button and then hit next. And then you can log in. Right. Next, it tells you to plug the chime in. And then it tells you about the installation method. And it's telling us to go to our existing doorbell, which we know is working. We need to turn off the power and then bypass the existing chime. All right, now I got the breaker off, so I'm going to go ahead and put these cables back to the factory settings, the normal settings for this chime, so that I can work from there as I install the new Rio Link video doorbell. All right, I think it's time for a disclaimer here. I am not a licensed electrician, so if you don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, talk to a professional so that you're safe. With that being said, I went ahead and put it back to the factory settings, and then all I had to do was install this one little jumper wire here between the uh, trans and the front. So super easy and uh, super quick to do that. And I'll let you see what it looks like. So here you can see it. It's just this one jumper wire right here connecting these two screws. 
and that's all I had to do to move it from the normal chime installation to the bypass of the chime so that the real link chime sounds when the doorbell button is pressed rather than this mechanical chime. And speaking of the real link chime, I placed it in the kitchen, which is further away from the bedrooms than the old mechanical chime, right here next to our Keurig. One of the things I never liked about this doorbell is how easy it is to remove. So it's just like that and you have it off. Way too easy for anybody that wants to do anything nefarious. The rest of the process is taking off a couple of wires right here. So two wires, and then I'll take off the bracket connected to the wedge. And finally, the two screws in the wedge itself, we'll take those off and we'll be all done with the uh, removal. All right, I've gone ahead and removed the existing doorbell. It recommends putting the extensions on the wiring, but given the fact that we don't have any real room here at all to put the nuts and everything, once we do that, I'm just gonna leave it like this and put the hooks right around the screws because I think I have enough slack here that I'll be able to pull that off. So we'll see. Given that we're over here in the corner and there's a lot of porch behind me to cover, I'm gonna use the wedge to make sure that we get a better view of the whole front here. So we'll select that method. I actually have a pretty good backer here, so I don't even think I need to um, drill the holes or put the uh, inserts or, you know, I certainly don't need the inserts, but I don't think I'd even need to drill the holes. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and put the screws in. Um, that seemed to work fine before in this installation. So it says to go ahead and install the wedge first and then we'll install the mounting plate on top of that. And then we'll be over to installing the video doorbell. So let's get the wedge up here. All right, I'm gonna feed the wires right through the wedge and then see if I can reuse any holes from before for the wedge. It looks like I can reuse one of them. And then I'll stick the second screw in the bottom and try to make sure this is relatively straight up and down. All right, I got those two screws secured. This thing is up here really well. So I can go ahead and put the mounting plate on it and then it uh, won't be long till we have a doorbell. The wedge used the long screws and the mounting plate is gonna use these tiny little screws um, that connect right into the wedge. So we're gonna feed the wiring right through the mounting plate. And this piece that sticks out goes on the top towards you and that would go to the back of the doorbell. And there's a couple knobs, there's four little like knobs sticking out that just help you uh, align the bracket right on top of the wedge. So that makes it really easy and um, it seems like it's going to be really easy to put up here. All right, I got one of my little screwdrivers that I like. I'm going to go ahead and insert this right into that hole. That's perfectly aligned thanks to these knobs. All right, now that this is super secure up here, it's not going anywhere. We're gonna go ahead and connect the wiring to the back of the doorbell. So like I said, I'm just gonna loop what we have around because that's plenty long for what I need to do. And that'll prevent any extra um, wiring or nuts that I need to try to hide or, you know, place somewhere in here. All right, that worked out great. Definitely have enough slack for me to connect those uh, properly without all that extra stuff in the box here. Um, with me not having a whole lot of room, this is a much better option for me. And now it's time to put the doorbell up. So you just take the top, place it against, and then push the bottom against, and it's connected. So easy as that. If you wanna take it off, you have to actually use a tool that goes in a slot in the bottom, and then it pops off like this. And you have your doorbell off. So it's as easy as that with the tool, but without the tool, um, you could see, you know, it's pretty hard to get this um, off here because it's connected on the bottom. It's all clipped together. So it's not like the other one we used to have where you could grab it and slide it off. Um, nothing like that. You'd have to know where it's at, how to do it um, before you could grab the doorbell. So I actually really like that it rings out here. when it's ringing inside as well. Um, that way, clearly the person ringing the doorbell knows that it was rang and it's working and somebody you know, would be notified. And I can go into the doorbell feed now. And wow, that looks really good. It covers our whole front porch really well and definitely uh, can see anywhere we need to. I can click on this one. I can actually zoom in by using two fingers, not double clicking like I thought it was. And, um, you know, you can see out pretty far. All right, I'm out of view and you can see there's no person detection here. Let's see when it picks me up. And it's immediate, like I'm barely around the corner and it knows there's a person there. One important aspect of a doorbell is ringing. So let's try that out. And you can see immediately 
we have the doorbell ringing and we have the critical alert and we can go to it and see us standing right here. And um, I mean, I'm right by the door here. I'm right against it and it still clearly picks me up. So it's really nice. It covers our full front door here. I'm even back away here and um, be on the other side and it's even better here. So I guess the worst case scenario is right against this side and I can still clearly see, um, you know, the person and by the looks of it, you can see that there's no way for a person to get into any type of uh, zone that's outside of the camera's view. So really good setup. This wedge is just enough that perfect uh, for our installation. And I think almost any installation, because like I said, it, it's pushing it over that right in front of the door, it easily picks me up and sees me. Okay, so don't be an idiot like me. I didn't think to look at the NVR through the monitor directly attached to it through that UI. And um, that's how you have to do it to connect the doorbell directly to the NVR. But once I did that, everything seems to be ready to go and connect to the NVR for the video doorbell through the Wi-Fi. So I'm going to jump into the Home Assistant app here. And let's go to the Rio link. And let's refresh this, reload this, and see if we can get the uh, other camera here. And look at that. Just like that, we have an extra device. And that is indeed the doorbell camera. Let's just look at the uh, Fluent here. Um, this is going to be a higher bandwidth uh, data pool and everything. But we'll see what it looks like here and see if we can get it pulled up. All right, look at that beautiful image. And directly within Home Assistant, we're looking at this. And now I'll simulate the doorbell press through my phone so that I can show you what happens to the Google Home as well as the lights in the bar area. So you can see as soon as I press that, we have the image come up here for the video doorbell, and then the lights begin to flash. They toggle off and on or on and off, depending on their state prior to that event. You can see in addition to having the visual cues and the chime upstairs and that type of thing, we also have critical alerts set up within Home Assistant. So you can see immediately, you know, we have this critical alert and I can click on it and open it up and have the video feed at that point. So I'm going to show you how I have Home Assistant integrated with the Rio Link video doorbell. You can see here I'm using the standard Home Assistant integration for Rio Link. And then within that, we have the different devices, including the doorbell. So at this point, you can go in and see all the information, you know, the siren, the different um, types of camera feeds that we can get the different entities such as motion or person or visitor. Visitor is actually the doorbell press. That's what they call it in the integration. So we have everything acting on if the visitor turns on, then you know something happens. So if somebody presses the doorbell, that would be the visitor turning on. All kinds of settings you can have in here as well. Um, but I'm going to focus on the automation here that I have set up. And in this one, we have when it changes to on, like I said, for the visitor, I have a couple of the Google Home hubs that we have the screens on that play the feed. And then we also have the toggle of the bar lights and then basically it toggles one way, waits two seconds, toggles again, waits two seconds, toggles, waits two seconds and toggles and then sends this notification. So this is the notification I was telling you about. Um, there's a little bit of YAML in here. So cue the Paul Hibbert, um, you know, YAML is easy. <laughs> and um, we have that in here, but it's it's really not very complex. Most of this is uh, UI driven. So it's not anything where, you know, you have to know a whole lot of coding. You could really just type in a few things and and it's pretty straightforward. Um, and, it, and the way that everything is now in uh, Home Assistant, it's helping you along and it's really not that that big of a lift. So this is in particular set up for an iPhone. So some of the um, you know protocols might be a slightly different to get a critical alert if you have an Android, but we have the notification and then send to my phone is what's selected. The doorbell press is the message that's sent. And then we have this little bit of YAML down here for the entity ID, which is pretty straightforward. Um, in this case, for us, it's the camera dot doorbell underscore snapshots underscore clear that I'm using. 
and then we're going to push the sound and it's a default and then the critical is the key of having that one there i'm assuming it's a boolean one zero in this instance and then the volume i played around with the volume a little bit i think it was initially set to like a one but it was too loud for me the uh, point two is enough that even if i'm working it's not overly distracting but i can hear it so it's a, a good setup there where I make sure I'm always aware if somebody presses our doorbell, whether I'm at home or away, and can immediately, you know, determine who's at the door utilizing that notification. All right, now it's time for my final thoughts. This is definitely a really neat doorbell, better than the one we had before that was a smart doorbell. Integrates directly within Home Assistant uh, through the NVR that we have. So just so many positives here with this doorbell. The uh, maybe negative that I saw was there was no clear instructions that you had to go into the UI directly within the NVR to get it added within the NVR to add it Home Assistant that way. Definitely a great product. Um, definitely integrates awesome with Home Assistant and definitely definitely is going to be staying on my door um, as my doorbell moving forward. No questions asked.